Oh, word. Oh. You can just really get a sense now of what it would have been like to have been lime burning in these kilns over a hundred years ago. But as I check the fire below, it's clear all's not well. Fire is burning too low. We need it to be burning higher. We should see glowing cherry red limestone. At the moment, we just see flatness, darkness, and it's all cold in there. They need to get as much air into the kiln as possible to make it burn hotter. If the fire goes out now, it would be disastrous. For two days, the lime burners have been tending the kiln, trying to get as much air into the fire as possible. But Colin's still concerned. The worry is that if there's not enough air going in, it can actually go out. So we would have to shovel everything out, and that would be a failure. Yeah, yeah, it would be raking it out. We had a big hole to put it in at the top, <laughs> and a little one to get it out at the bottom. Yeah, so it would take ages. It would. All they can do is hope their efforts haven't been in vain. There's one sure way to test whether this limestone's been burnt or not, and that's to add it to water. Mm. And if it's been burnt through, it should slake. If it hasn't been burnt through, it will just remain as a stone. OK, let's see it go in then. Look at that! <laughs> That's excellent! That's amazing. That's the transformation from limestone to quick lime to lime putty, which is what we're after. And if the rest of the kiln's like that, then we're in business. It's the third day of the burn, and all the limestone should have turned into quick lime. Now the dangerous part, unloading the kiln. Quick lime dust reacts violently with moisture, so if it touches skin or is inhaled, it will burn. Time for some Edwardian health and safety. As I am likely to sweat an awful lot whilst doing this, because of the heat of the kiln, and just the physical activity, I've made myself some protective gear. So I have my hood. People will laugh, but I think I shall have the last laugh. I even made myself some mittens. Long sleeve numbers. Oh. I've got an apron here. I'm going all out for this. Can't see a thing. <laughs> last thing, goggles. I say goggles, they're more like shades. <laughs> there we go. I'm ready to deal with a quick line. <laughs> Let me take these off so I can see. <laughs> You're like a giant teddy bear. <laughs> right, well, with all that gear then, I suppose you should be the one that's right in at the, uh, the stoke hole, yeah? Yeah, the coal face. The burn should have produced 10 tonnes of quick line all of which must be unloaded by hand. It truly is an awful job. The mesh is used to separate the quality quicklime from the spoil. Ah, this is killing me, probably quite literally. Right. So here we go, it's the final process of the day. This highly caustic substance is going into our barrel and then we can get this back to the farm, but it's an absolute joy to have got so far. Here we have it, caustic lime. It's what we came for, and it's what we're going to come away with. After three days of back-breaking work, they've produced ten tonnes of quick lime. <laughs>